einer von den Hauptwachen in dem Terrasfrieden Chabad, das mit Magdeir, Terrasfrieden Chabad, erklärt, die Sache von Hashem Echot. Was der Tisch Hashem Echot? Also, uns ist dort nur Hashem, und uns ist Hashem in Stock in Dachen. Was müssen wir in Stock in Dachen? Das ist eine ganze Welt. Hashem Echot, Menschen ist nur, als sie dort nur ein, ein, ein Eberster und ist dort noch ein Eberster. Das, das, nicht von dem davon reden. Hashem Echot meint, also, uns ist Hashem in Stock in Dachen, also, Christus in Dachen. Was ist das Gefühl, das kein Dach? Für das ist eine ganze Welt, die drei Pfeffer beschreibt. In der Beruf, bringt sich von Balschemto, wie die Weg mit drei Pfeffer beschreibt. Für jeder Zeit, als drei Pfeffer beschreibt, die Welt einmal, beschreibt es mehr Breschitz, und nachher die Welt ist das Ziel von sich allein. Nein. Die Pfeffer hat in ein Beschaffen Kohle, Regen, Berge. Die Hierarchie, weil wir beschaffen in der Rekia, der Rebschel gibt auch die Hierarchie. In der Kirche, der Gettliche Kirche, die Werte der Hierarchie, das hält in ein, das hält in ein, das hält in der Hierarchie, und durch dem, und durch dem, das ist die Existenz von der Rekia. Wenn wir Ufer, ein Weil Ufer, dann wird es wieder gehen. Zum Beispiel, wenn ein Mensch nimmt das Stein und wartet ihn von unten herauf, in der Stein geht, geht von unten nach oben. Wie lange geht der Stein von unten nach oben? Kauf macht sie dort der Kirche, wo der Kirche stupft. Kauf macht sie dort der Kirche, wo er stupft, geht er auf, von unten nach oben. Endig sagt der Kirche, wird uns. Fällt der Stein nach oben, und der hat Gang von dem Stein von unten nach oben, ist er nicht da. Aber was weiß das? Das weiß nichts nur, aber beschaffen der Kirche, wenn sie Hände kommen, dann wird Bottel werden, mit werden uns die Pole. Das weiß der Kirche, aber weiß, was ist das Ist der? Beschaffen der Kirche, stupft er mir, und sie jeder oder die Halicha, die Gang von uns zum Ruf. Was ist das? Was? Das ist noch eine Sache. Das ist nicht eben, das ist nicht noch eine Sache, wie es Kirche ist. Die ganze Sache, das, was der Stein geht von uns zum Ruf, das ist mehr nicht. <lacht> Der Dürfer von dem Kirch. Das ist der Weg. Und so wird gefragt, der Steinige war noch fliehen, die Kirche. Der Steinige war noch wie wir feigele. Nein. Eben so wird gefragt, wie der Stein geht? Ja, der Stein geht. Eben so wird gefragt, nicht wie der Stein geht. Er wird gefragt, wie der Steinige war noch gehen, die Kirche. Wie? Du sagst, aber nicht, der Steinige war noch gehen, die Kirche. Eier geht. Und das, was er geht, das darf man ja sein, nicht zu dem Stein. Der Stein ist nicht geworden, kein Gehen, die Kirche. Aber was er geht, das führt so durch der Kirche. Die Welt wird nicht in dem Schuh. In der Welt, die Welt ist fran, aber die Welt ist fran. Richtig. In der Welt, die Welt ist fran, 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 die Vader Brie, Farschitz mit Brechit, ist die Welt nicht in die Gatte, die in Frankreich ist, die Welt ist nicht in Frankreich. Aber sie fragen, das darf man mir ja sein, nicht zu der Welt zu den Mäberschen. Das führt so durch den Mäberschen Sibu. Der Rebbe, der heißt die Hierarchie, führt so durch den Sibu. Und das ist eine von den Absätzen, Hashem Echot, für die Frage nur Hashem, und ich sage mir, okay, in der Acht. Eine von der Welt, das ist nicht über die Welt zu fragen. Das führt so durch den Mäberschen, die Bruder. Das ist ein Weg, aber ich will aufklären, das wird so weg, weil man macht es in der Mund. One of the primary principles that Chabad Chassidus underscores and discusses at length is the notion of Hashem Echad, that God is one. Now, what is the definition that God is one and that's it? Does it mean that there is not another God? Obviously not. That's not something that um, Tehra needs to express with such certitude and that we're called upon to understand it and take it so deeply into our hearts as a reality that there's not another God is no 
deep and, and, and difficult to, to comprehend principle. What we say Hashem Echad, in truth what we're saying is that there is nothing other than Him. That there's no existence other than God alone. Which of course begs the question, what do you mean when we say there's no existence other than God? There is! There's a world. There's an entire universe. We see it, we feel it, we experience it. So what are we, what, what is Tara asking of us and what are we expected to believe when we're called upon to believe that there is no world? And so Chassidus explains, actually in the first chapter in Shara Yichad Vamun, based on a concept articulated by the Baal Shem Tev, that the notion that God is the only existence we can understand as we understand the way the Torah describes creation. When God said, how did God call existence into creation? By saying the words, let there be. Let there be a heavens, and there were heavens. Let there be an earth, and there was an earth. God called them into existence with his speech, as it were. And so the Baal Shem Tov explains that those words that God said, as for example, Yehira Kia, let there be a heavens, that those words continue to stand in the heavens, and the words calling everything else into existence, those words, i.e., that godly power, that divine energy that called it into existence at the dawn of existence, continue to remain in everything that exists as long as it exists. And if that divine energy, those words, were for one instant to be removed from existence, then existence would stop existing entirely and completely as if it had never been. So that all of existence is dependent utterly and completely on the divine words, the divine energy, God, in all that exists. And by way of example, the Alter Rebbe in Tanya, in Shara Yichud Ve'amunah, gives the example of a stone that somebody throws. So when somebody takes an object, a stone, and throws it upward, how long does it continue going up? It goes up for as long as the energy that the thrower put into that stone, as he lifted it and threw it, as long as that energy is in the stone, the stone continues to rise. The moment the energy ends, the stone reverts back to its original existence, an object subject to the forces of gravity, and comes crashing down to earth. Now, this concept that the energy is in there, it means two things. And that's what causes it to move upwards against the force of gravity. The first thing that it means is that obviously, as long as it's there, it goes up. And the moment it stops being there, it comes back down. But it also tells us what do we mean and explains to us what do we mean when we say something is in there, there's a power introduced into it that transforms it. In what way does it transform it? Take a look at this stone as it's flying through the air. Is this stone a moving stone? Clearly it is. It's moving. Stone stands still. This particular stone is moving. But has the stone been transformed into something else? Is it now a moving stone as opposed to a regular stone? It's exactly the same. What has happened is, is that another thing has been introduced into the stone that transforms it from a standing object into an object that is now moving because there's something else in it. In the same way, when we say that Hashem created the world, God creates the world, what we're saying here is, why is there existence? What transforms nothingness 
into existence. There is nothing else, only God, prior to creation. There was only God. Then God introduced something new into non-existence. What was that? His divine energy creating in some utterly under, under, un, not understandable way, existence out of non-existence. What has changed here? In precisely the same way that with the stone, nothing has fundamentally, or to use a 25 cent word, existentially transformed in this stone, so something has been introduced in it. In precisely the same way, when Hashem creates the world and transforms it from non-existence, i.e., there is nothing other than God, into something that exists. Why? Because there is God in it, fundamentally nothing has changed then. All that there is, is God. And the world that we see and the world that we exist doesn't exist because something has fundamentally changed and there's now a universe, a world, existence. In reality, all that there is, is God. And that's the meaning of Hashem Echot. That's what we mean when we say God is one, there is only Him, and in truth, there's nothing else. Das auch in der Einteil von der Aufklärung der Schemachot. Weiter vor allem nachher. In Tanya, Scharechot und Amun, Beschad der Alter Rebbe bringt, zum Wort von Baal Shem Tov, an der Rebbe zu Mahabim, die Welt bekommen Rege. Und Eib, der sagt zum Beispiel, dem Dibur Hirokia, wie der Rebbe schon gesagt hat, also halt in einem Dagen Hirokia, und nicht mehr mit Aufhören Dagen Hirokia. Wir werden ein Weifes, wir werden der ganze Welt ein Weifes, das eben sich entfernt wird. Legt zu, dass er noch ein Wort sagt, legt zu, noch ein Wort. Also zu der Dibur, die hier in Kia im Lubisch, er hat angezogen, betrachtet die Orkia. Und belebt, was meint das? Und was verdient man davon, in dem Verstand von der Schemachot? Der Rebbe macht der Rebbe. Ich meine, und der Rebbe, der Rebbe ist gut für die Jungen, er macht der Rebbe. In jedem Tag, in Frank zwei Tage, Frank ein Tag, an die Kudem schutzt, der Zeit der Schöpfe in aller Beschäftigung. Wo der Zeit der Schöpfe? Wo die existieren. Die Wasser existiert, die Feier existiert, der Dämon existiert, er ist da, er gefindet sich. Was wir von Lauren Tonk haben, die Welt gefindet sich. Es gefindet sich Wasser, gefindet sich Feier, gefindet sich Steiner, gefindet sich Beiner, gefindet sich Dämm, gefindet sich Zemeich. Das ist der Zeit der Schöpfe in aller Beschäftigung. Weiter von einer zweiten Sache, was ist die Beschäftigung? Was ist deine Sache? Was ist dein Thema? Das ist Feier, das ist Wasser, das ist Dämm, das ist Zemeich. Ja, das ist auch das Kapitän. Beschaffst du mir so, erschäm mich heute. Und sie nicht existiert, die stehen da heute zu rein. Das ist ein Verbind. Die Beschäftigungen von Welt mit den Eberschen in beiden Halokken für die Beschäftigungen. Zeit, dass der Existenz der Erde, dass die Sache existiert, enorm mit seinem Ruf, weil der Eberschen heißt, dass sie existieren. Er wird aufhören heißen, wir werden das einwerfen. Das ist einfach. Das verbindet man das Existenz von der Sache, das wird die Sache keinem verbinden mit den Eberschen. Weiter darf ich aber noch eine Sache. Was ist die Sache? Was ist der Musik von Feier? Was ist der Musik von Wasser? Das ist der Feier, den verbunden mit den Eberschen. Was ist das verbunden mit den Eberschen? Die Chore eben muss kommt nicht zurück. Der Eberster ist ein Schein, was hat kein Gäder nicht, kein Zier nicht, kein Dach nicht. Wo fängt sich an, die Sachen von gewissen Sachen, was sind die Gedanken von den Zweiten, in der Brie, in der Welt? Das ist Feier, das ist Wasser. 
one aspect in this notion that Hashem Echad, that God is one, that all of existence is dependent on God, hence there's nothing other than God, because the existence of everything is utterly and completely dependent on the fact that God is calling it at every moment into existence. The Baal Shem Tev, however, according to this example that the Baal Shem Tev gives about the, the divine energy in each thing, there's also, and, and he says, that the word of God needs to be in the heavens. The Alter Rebbe uses the expression, not just simply he is there, but is melubish. It's enclosed in the heavens. So it's not it's in there. The difference between being and being enclosed in, the thing about a clo clothing is, is that it needs to be measured to what is enclosed in it. In other words, it's, there's a, not just simply a general connection. It's there, but it's enclosed in it means that it has a connection with its form, as it were, what it is. Why does the Alter Rebbe need to add that word melubish, enclosed? The Rebbe, our Rebbe, explains that when you talk about existence, there's two elements here. In the existence of everything, there's the general existence of the universe. The universe exists in everything that is in it. But then there's the individual elements and aspects of existence. There's fire, and there's water, and there's air, and there's living objects, and there's vegetation, and there's inorganic matter. All different elements in what we know as the world, as the universe. So not only is it that they exist, but also they exist in a specific and, and, and very precise form, each element of existence and of energy. When we say Hashem Echad, the notion that God is one, we don't just simply mean God is one and is all of existence in terms of that general term, quote, existence. We say God is one and is everything with all elements of existence. In other words, not just the existence of existence, but the form, the, 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 the different components and the different components within the components of everything that exists. And there too, Hashem Echad, it's one with God. So that it's not just simply a general connection and a general um, concept he's here, but rather he's in every form of existence. Which of course begs the question, what do we mean? How can we possibly say that? God, one thing that we can say about God, and the only thing that we can say about him himself, is that we can't say anything about him. Because God, in fact, is the true infinite, i.e., there's no description of God. You cannot have a description of that which is the essence. Any description is a limitation. So he's utterly and completely, um, the notion that we, that, that we are all familiar with in a, in a regular sense, okay, in guf, in musa guf, that he has no body and he has no form of a body, is not simply to, 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 so that we do not think that somewhere up in the sky there's that old man with a long flowing white beard, you know, shooting lightning bolts down, down at anybody that, that, that thinks the wrong thought. Obviously we understand God has no body. What do you mean when we say he has no body? The essential meaning of that term is, is that God has no form whatsoever. How then is it, is it possible to resolve that, it would seem, unresolvable paradox that from a God without a form is intimately connected and causes every form of existence and all that exists to in some way be inherently Him. Again, not just simply the existence of what ex it exists, but the differing forms, the contradictory forms, the, the, the infinite number of different types of creation that have been created, and that all of those differences are also God. How is that God? God is utterly without a form. 
To which Chassidus explains that God created, I said to Rabbi El, there's really no English word for the, the Hebrew term kaviyochal, as it were. God, as it were, created, as it were within himself, attributes. Those aren't God, but God created attributes from which, and the term that you probably have heard at one point or another, spherot. And as it were, God made of himself, within himself, that we say God is wise, God is good, God is powerful, God is merciful, godly attributes within God himself, the spirit. And then, in creation, everything that is in creation is in one form or another, and obviously since there are only ten general spirit, but within that, the infinite multiplicity of permutations of what those attributes are and must be, all of the different forms of everything that is in creation, in very general terms. Mayim, water. What is water? The essential inherent property of water is, is that it flows. That's what water does. Water flows. That's the first thing you know about water. Without even getting close to it, you see it's flowing. Okay? It's up here. It's going to end down there. Okay. I guess in, in, in high school they told us that means water will find its level. It flows. It flows from a high place to a low place. You've never seen a waterfall where the water is going up. Water falls down. What is that a reflection of? That's a reflection of chesed of kindness. What is kindness? What the inherent nature of a kind person is that he or she gives to one who needs. So there's the one who has up here, there is the one that needs over here, whatever it is we're talking about, and because of kindness it flows from here to here. That's what the inherent nature of chesed is. Water is a reflection of God's divine chesed. Fire has the opposite um, nature. It doesn't flow from down, up to down. Fire rises, and that's gvura. What's gvura? Strength. The, the difference in nature between, quote, the kind person and the strong, you know, the word that comes with strong, strong type. Next word, strong Silent type, okay? He's not the, the, hell, uh, the fellow well met, constantly out there giving, doing. The strong one is, the, is, is, is that opposite trait of being closed within himself. That's what Prakyavis means when it says, Ezel Gibar Kevesh He has the ability to withhold. That's like to reach the strong one when it needs to go from below to above, and so on and so forth. So that, so that fire is a as, as, as an example, a reflection of God's gvura. And so on and so forth in all that exists, even within that fire, uh, water doesn't just flow. Water is also wet and water is also, um, it, it, uh, it also goes everywhere. All reflections of divine traits. Fire is not only rises, but fire is also hot and fire also consumes. Again, every element within everything that exists is in one form or another a reflection of the divine godly trait that calls it into existence. So in effect what we're saying then is, is not only that all of existence exists because God calls it into existence in that general form, but rather each and every single element of existence in all that exists, its multiplicity, its it's, it's unique characteristics. What makes it special, what makes this a stone, and that an airplane, and that a human being, and this a good fruit, and that a sharp fruit, is in every way also simply a reflection of, the, of God in it, causing it to be that particular way and no other. Now, just as that is true, in terms of what we say Hashem Echod, that God is in everything in terms of all of existence, 
In precisely the same way, it's true as far as Torah and mitzvahs concerned. That the fact that we have mitzvahs and we have different mitzvahs, and each mitzvah is different, is also a reflection of the same concept.
Wij zijn de zegel van de mevet, kan men kapeer van de zegel van de balabas. Balabas verstaat het niet, de rabbit verstaat het anders. Dat is de rechtsop, er is bad. Er is er niet te zoeken, er is niet uitgedeeld. Wij zegel verstaat het verstaat van kapeer van de zegel van de balabas. De rechtsop van de balabas, Rats ik het barchel het zaak is het is er al. Niet naar iedereen naar de basel zijn. Iedereen naar de barn ooit gedeeld. Wat heeft er te iedereen ooit gedeeld? Als de reep vergegeven gaat er met wat hij bijzonder in had. Die met wat speelt daar minjen in de midden. Die met wat speelt daar minjen in de midden. Door de barchel het zaak is het is er al. Want het zal geweest niet daar hierbij. Het zal geweest alle te reageren met wat één niet goed is. Wat is niet goed is. De reep ze heeft dat van volgen. Voor de gewerd naar het bottel te meepen, voor de gewerd naar de lezakjes, de zichel. Rauze ik een barge lezakjes in Israël, de zichel hier belemt in de mensen. Ja, maar zachtere, niet door een zachtere bekamer. Ja, de gele kentere te bijzonder in je, te bijzonder inhoud, want dat gele speelt de ander uitzitten met de mensen. Punt wie gered vrije, ben ik eerder de mensen van de Hashem echt. Als die wel dat wij verbonden met de neighbors zijn, niet naar de tijd er schrijven we van alle neighbors. Dat is ja, dat niet existiert. Dat is te wenig. Als dat wij verbonden zijn, de inhoud van jij er naar. Wasser is de opspiegeling van Geset. Feier is de opspiegeling van Geboren. Het is te wenig dat er algemene existentie is, dat we de niet goed er schrijven van alle neighbors. Dat dat wij niet verbonden met de tegen van jij er niet verbonden met de neighbors. Dezelfde dag ben ik nog meer bezorgd. Und noch mal, wenn ich die Tiere mitzweif, sind nicht nur die mitzweif, weil das der Sieb auch nicht braucht. Das Sieb ist echt, jeder mitzweif hat ein besonderer Inhalt, weil das zu viel gewisse sich auch in den Menschen. Das ist beklaut die mitzweif, zu der Sieb fragen, die mitzweif klaut jetzt, weil der Rebbe hat ausgeklimmt, die Babuste mit Zäumen, weil das hat eine spezielle Sache, nicht nur in der Mitte von Sieb auch nicht braucht, sondern auch in dem Inhalt, was edel für die Menschen. There's a Mishnah in Pirkei Avis that we say um, at the end of every chapter of Pirkei Avis. <coughs> Ethics of our fathers. Ratzah Kaddish Baruch Hu Lezakis is Yisrael. God wanted to um, give merit to the Jewish people. Lefichah, for that reason, here Belahem Teir in Mitzvahs, he gave them a multiplicity, many, um, a, a, a Teir with many parts and many, many Mitzvahs. Now, it, it seems that what the Mishnah is saying, the, the word that the Mishnah uses is, Hir Balaham Teira Mitzvahs. He gave them a lot of mitzvahs. In other words, that the mitzvah, the, the question the mitzvah, the, the, the Mishnah, as it were, seems to be attempting to answer is, why did God give us a lot of mitzvahs? He could have given us a few mitzvahs. And the, mitzvah, and the Mishnah answers, he gave us a lot of them because he really liked us and so he wanted to give us a lot of schusim, a lot of merits. More mitzvahs, the more merits. The Rebbe comes and explains the Mishnah in a far deeper way. What's the essence of the, 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 the notion of many mitzvahs? What's the difference between, logically, the question seems to be a good one. Why did Hashem need to give us many mitzvahs? What's the idea of a mitzvah? The idea of a mitzvah is to do God's will. God wants us to do something, we do it. So what difference does it make if we do God's will in 10 ways or we do God's will in 613 ways? We're doing God's will. That's what a mitzvah is. It's a good deed. It's a good deed. Do we need to do 613 different kinds of good deeds? Do five kinds of good deeds, but do, do them a lot of times. Spend a lot of time on each and every single one of them. So, and the Rebbe explains that the notion of tzivui, that God, we're doing a mitzvah because, because God wants us to do that, to doing a mitzvah, because it's God's will, then if, in a, the effect that that mitzvah has is on our general existence, that we, 
as God's creations exist not for ourselves, but we exist to do His will. That's our entire purpose. We exist to do His will. But that affects our general existence. Comes the mission and tells us, Here, Bolahem Teira Mitzvah. God gave us many mitzvahs. Why? Lizakes. So as to be mizake us. The simple translation of the word, as I said, mizake, is to give us merits. But in fact, a mitzvah has two parts. A mitzvah has one effect on the person, is that it's a tzivoy Hashem, it's a command of God's. Hence, the person fulfilling that command is when he or she is doing that mitzvah, is at that time submitting himself or herself to God. A second element that the mitzvah does to the person, it's mizake, it refines him or her. And that refinement, that process of changing, of transforming, and ultimately elevating is the reason why Hashem gave us so many mitzvahs here Belahem to transform, to change, and to refine every single element of our existence. The Zayar says that the mitzvahs are emach pekud in the Malka. The 248 positive commandments are reflective of, a, as it were, the 248 metaphorical limbs of the king. And that each one of those mitzvahs corresponds to one of our 248 limbs. So that we have an ear that, to, that sees, and we have an eye that, that, I'm sorry, ear that hears, an eye that sees, and a mouth that talks, and that each one of the mitzvahs affects another one of our three, 248 organs, and as a result, elevates them and transforms them, and that's the, uh, ultimate, the ultimately the essence of what, of, of what the mitzvah is supposed to do. So, and, and that of course begs the question, what do we mean when we say that the mitzvah is not just simply, it would seem, it answers, why, why is it that we say that a mitzvah is doing, it's, it's not just simply this general thing from Hashem, but in fact, each mitzvah has its own particular property. At one level, it would seem that on the contrary, that limits the, ma the, the magnificence of an individual mitzvah. If we look at a mitzvah as God's command, then what we're saying in effect is that, that mitzvah is a reflection of His will. When we say the mitzvah, however, is a particular mitzvah, it's one particular element, then in fact we're saying the mitzvah is not that, but it's, it has this, as it were, specific purpose. It's not this, woo. Similarly in Torah, Torah also has a multiplicity. It's not just Torah, Torah, every, every element of Torah says it's four parts. There's pshat, the, the simple explanation, the allegorical explanation, the analytical explanation, and the mystical explanation. They are themselves reflective of the four levels of creation, atzilus, bria, yitzira, asiyah, subject for an entirely different conversation. But again, the same thing, so we're saying the Torah that I, up until now, from, uh, up until a moment ago, thought was a reflective of, quote, his will, and now you come and tell me no. It's actually reflective of the four elements of creation, and each element of Torah is reflective of another one of them. That's not the same God as in Torah. And so, <clears throat> in fact, though, what's the difference? Doing a mitzvah, it's less, it, you might say it's similar to the difference between an eved, a slave, and a child. Both are listening. What's the difference? Or, 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 a, or a subject, a slave or a subject, a true subject. The, the master tells a slave, do something. The slave does it. He knows if he doesn't do it, there's going to be trouble. There's going to be heck to pay. So he does it. Not because he wants to, not because he understands it, not because he feels anything about it, it has nothing to do with it. His doing, the command of his master, is simply a reflection of his submission to his master. There's another way, however, to do something where it's not simply a reflection of what the master wants, but rather the person 
utterly understands, makes it part of his being, and, 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 and rises to a level of, of it, it, it's actually, I feel it, I love it, I'm in awe of it. It's a reflection, not simply of my submission to the master, but on the contrary, my being one with him. And that's the reason why um, God, so exactly in the same way that Hashem is involved in every element of creation, not just simply in its general sense, it's exactly the same way, but rather in its particularity of its existence. In the same way, when it comes to mitzvahs, it's not just simply that God wants and therefore we do, but God enclosed himself here, Bolahem Teira mitzvahs, and he gave us a multiplicity of mitzvahs. Why so much? Because Ratzal is a case. He wants to give us the ability to refine every element of our existence in every part of our lives and in every one of them, which each mitzvah that we do, another part, another form, another element, another trait, another aspect of our existence is mezake. That mitzvah can refine it, elevate it, and make it one. Now, those are the particular mitzvahs. The Rebbe, however, picked out from Teireh and Mitzvahs, he pointed to 10 Mitzvahs, the Mitzvahim, the Mitzvah campaign, because the Rebbe saw in those individual Mitzvahs not just simply a particular element, but in that particular Mitzvah, each one of them with its own general message. Mit der Manfreher besteht in Gemaren Ramach Mitzvah Kenegid Ramach Evri. Das ist ein Gemaren sein Seher. In Gemaren steht Kenegid Ramach Evri passiert die Ramach Evri von Menschen. In Seher steht Ramach Evri und Malke. Ramach Evri und Kavichel von Ebers. In Ebri im Dämmer muss ein Kammer sagen. Ein Sache fragen zum Allermärsten. A nikude has shove in all Abram developed nikude. What's it does? The Abram for men. Nish tarang in the kimprot and both the Abram. The Abram, the nefesh that belongs to the nefesh was revealed to an alay. Weiter frane, with the man for air, the ring and protif in the other Abram. Through the egg and that man, through the ever and a heart man, through the copper statesman. The hand to Arbutman. In the mere protest was done by the river, if running, but then from Abram Clawley murder, the cop, the heart, and from the hand to fifth, about that, I'm either playing the zone, the family had hung hand to fifth, but I'm can't just for a glass, and the hand to the fifth, the cop and to the heart. How much the driver, but how many the good I'm so tough in all of it was. Das ist das Ziel, wo er schön weiter erfahren. Der Teichen Prat, aber dem Teichen Prat erfahren. Prat, Stammprat, Hand und Füße, der Prat. Ein Prat ist immer wichtig für eine sichere Sache. Weil der Rebbe tut sich um die Zähne mit Säumen, die Zähne mit der Kompanie. Er tut sich um die Zähne mit der Säume, alles Ziel, wo er schön mit der Halbe selber Sache. Ich möchte mir nicht den Inhalt von dem Mitzvah. Ich frage den Inhalt. Von mehr Prozent, die gesagt haben, über die Hand und die Finger, noch mehr, oder von der Kopf und die Haare. Das ist natürlich immer die Sache. Zum allem Menschen, die Frauen, die Mifzatera. Was ist Mifzatera? Ein Idol lernt in Tera. Was ein Idol lernt in Tera, hat für uns zu verstehen anders. Es sagt Sachen, was kommt daraus, das passt von einem Rassus. Was Menschen lernen, das wissen wir nicht. Aber wenn man lernt in Tera, hat man verstehen. Wer der andere an. Andere Schaffe, wir hätten uns gucken, er fährt doch wieder am Ende. In der Ruf geht es weiter vor einem Beis mal zu fahren. Aber wenn ja, der Riedische Hohe darf sein zu fahren. Zu fahren von der Ziffer geht es. Zeh hat der Heimschuch von mir zu der. Da hat er bin ich hier bei Nordmann Lamotten. 
אפרים נכתבם בין אדם לחבר. אפרים מפסופון אב הסיסרו. ואהבת לרחו כמך, איזה עוד חמשתת עודן, אין את ליבו מצווית לי. בהם שדרסו, אפרים נכתבים מפסד דוקה. ועשית דוקה, כשסעיד עושה דוקה פושקי בביכם שטוב. ויעדר טוב, יעדר טוב גיטר הריים דוקה. ‫שהוא איסר דה מצווה בסיר מוקאים, ‫דה סיר המחנך, ‫דה סיר החינוך פור דה מנשון, ‫דה ברנסם הרויסט שנבא מדי חזר לוויסן ‫אדר דף זור גם פור עצמאי דה מנשון. ‫פונקס ויעדר טוב, ‫זור של פרדיך, ‫ונדי צוי ביניהם, ‫דה נגלת את הפרדים, ‫זור של פרדיך, ‫פרדיך פרדיין לבני בית. פרדיין משפחה, אז זה דפר גדר טוב, הרעיין פרפונאי פסים פוש כזור גם פרצווי תמיד. ואי תפרן מבצע חינוך, מדף מחנר ואין, לגע גרייס שנחת אף מחנר ואין די קינדר, אינדיאל בית הדחם ופריאל דרמן, פעם בין אדם למוק ומסי בין אדם לחבר. ואי תפרן מבצע תפילה. פול טיבר דאג, הקורס מבר בנגיע תפילה. בכלל המנש, הוטי זו דרי טייל. פרנדר פרשטנט, פונקופ, פרנדר גפיל פונהארט, ופרנן, מה יצא בפייל? מנש פרסט, טוב. על פי רוב, בסך מנש נולד נדרפון, וסניתו די הרמוניה טבעי שנדי דרי זך. די קופ פרשטית אין זך, ודי גפיל פונהארט יצא צווי זך. פרשתי פרשתי תרדוסי דרמס ומדף דוס, אבל דהר גלוסה צווית הזאת. בשעת עם אשתו, דהרמוניה סביב של קופנהארט, אודר נוחמר, אמול דוס ניסטר ופל דהרמוניה, אמול ורת הגשרות, המלחמת סביב של קופנהארט, דקופ ביל אין לך, ודהר פרשתי צווית הזאת. קום תוריד דמייסה בפייר, נדרי תריך, ורת ההרס, ורת ההיר. ‫דאבי כן משאף נהרמוני ‫סביב שנדיאל לדרי זך. ‫דאב די נדאי מצור זך, ‫ואז יהיה הכר פונדיאל לדרי, ‫ואז דאך ההכר יביאה לדרי זך ‫מברם בופל, ‫שדיאנה זך, ‫ומדיאנה זך, ‫פיר טון סביב, ‫ומחת השולם סביב שנה לדרי זך. ‫ואז יהיה הכר לזך. ‫דאי הכר לזך את אינס, ‫אין דך, דרי בשטר. בשעה הצעיר לק תפילה. בוא תאונגשים את התפילה. תאונגשים את התפילה. כבר שתי דמי זכנו, סביב שזה ישמע ישראל, השם אלקין, השם אחות. ונדי תפילה לקטר, אפנהנט, אפנהנט, זאת פרבון מדמייסה, דהנט, דבן כנגד, כנגד יהרץ, כנגד לגנדוס, ונפון קופ. ‫בשעת ארטראכט, ‫ונשמע ישראל השם אחות, ‫ונדוס פירטונת, ‫מידי קופ ומידי הארט ומידי הנד, ‫ועברתי בשנדי הרמוניה, ‫ברטל דין שלום. ‫ואת אפרים מזוזה. ‫מזוזה, היית אפרבין מצומי ברשטין, ‫נישט נור אר דיך עליהם, ‫דיין קופ ודיין הארט ודיין הנד, ‫נורך דהויז, ‫דרכות זה אינו בסין דהויז, ‫דאלה זכם ואינה דוד הפייך ‫בין פרבון מצומי ברשטין. ‫ואית אפרנן, ‫דו את החלטת פוזיטי בזכם, ‫אפרנן את נגטי בזכם. ‫אי דפס עם כושר. ‫פונקטוויל, בשעה שרצת מיס כושר, ‫ואת הגביס זכם, ‫הגביס זכם עם קופ וננהר, ‫ודן, רייס ורטר, ‫עבדה בין אפלרנן, ‫הגביס זכם, ‫דפני מוכשר דרסו. ‫דאכשור דרסו איז, ‫בשעה של פיר סחופת. ‫שדו המייכל, הגזון של המייכל, ‫פונקט ונגשמי, שדו פיזיר. ‫דו המייכל וסכם פייל, ‫נעזך וסיניש גזון. ‫בשעה שהיא דפניס כושר הזכם, ‫כן דפניס פייל נגביס הזכם, ‫ודפניס לוסטים ניסו, ‫סופרשטיין גוד תרא, ‫וסופרשטיין גוד דממס וסידיש כתיב. ‫בסרס כושר, ‫ורטר מוכשר מרר, ‫מר כאלה סופרשטיין דממס. ‫ואתה פרנטר עושה משפחה. ‫ובית אפרנן נשק, ‫נר שבס קדש. ‫וזה שאת פיצל הזך, ‫וזה איברגם בונסוידש ופרויים. 
Shabbos hat sich nicht speziell gesagt. Shabbos hier steht im Passik, bei Chala Lekim bei Yema Shvi. Der Rätsel geändert, die, die Arbeitweine bei Yema Shvi in Dibetan Tok. Fragen alle die Scheile, was ist geändert im Dibetan Tok? Er geändert im Lexen Tok. Im Dibetan Tok ist doch schon nach dem Shabbos. Was ist das für Chala Lekim bei Yema Shvi? Das heißt, die Prasche, Ma ha yo elam chaser monucha, ba shabbat ba monucha. Wie ist es, wenn die Arbeit von ihm ist? Wenn ich war in die monucha, das ist ein Ding, wenn ich schabbat. Das ist ein Kurat. Der Eber steht, wo ich alle Kim bei ihm erschwin. Fragst du die Scheile, was meint das? Die Welt hat beschaffen geworden, von ihm ist es monucha oder von ihm ist es monucha. Die Welt hat beschaffen geworden, von ihm ist es monucha. Von ihm ist es monucha, und ich habe die Welt nicht getan. Was sagt der Asche, als Kaufmann in der gewöhnten Schabbat, in der gewöhnten Manuche, was sich gefällt im Welt? Die Welt hat sich beschäftigt worden von dem Lachen von dem Person, nicht von Manuche. Frau Schitt, wir haben alle Kinder bei ihm erschwiegen. Und der Rabbi hat mal aufgeklärt, bei einer langen Arche, das muss ich sehr spät, da hat er einen halben Wort. Was ist beim Menschen lager, wenn er arbeitet oder wenn er ruht? Wenn er arbeitet, er konzentriert, zu schaffen gewisse Sachen. Wenn er ruht, dass er Hacher von gewissen Sachen, dass er wird in sich allein. Der Rebbe hat er angemeldet bei jedem Schabbat in der Brühe, ein Idol kennen der Herr und der Meber sind ganz ein Hacher, Hacher von Gott. Das ist Schabbat. Und die Lichtigkeit von Schabbat, das ist die Übergang geworden. Zu diesen Frühen, die bringen allein die Lichtigkeit von Schabbat. Wer kann er reinbringen? Ein Idol hat mir zu dem Gefühl, den ganzen Hacher von Welt, von Menuchen. Hacher von Welt. Und beschaut mit dem Rotorn, der alle, mit dem Haus, mit dem Stadeldein, jeder riet bei sich allein, in die Gitten, in die Zähne, in die Zähne. Und weiter, wo habt ihr Rache, komm ich, ich hätte ihn von dem Zähne. Pillen auf zwei Zähne, weil wir werden all die Gemerbe heften zu nehmen. Dem Rotor, der Börcher, der Sack ist in die Frau. Nicht nur Ton, alles, weil wir den Knecht mehr müssen tun. Jeder sagt, dass wir wissen, dass wir gewissen Inhalt hier damit wird. Wir fragen uns, dass die Zähne mit so ihm, dass wir uns aussiedeln, alle Sachen, aussiedeln, und das wird bringen, die ganze Welt wird werden ausgedeckt, wie der Bier, der Moschee, wo dann wird die ganze Welt werden ausgedeckt, mal eine Hora, die ist schön. The, we, we mentioned earlier the notion of the Ramach the 248 mitzvahs that are limbs. The, um, are, that, that quote is brought both in the Zohar as well as in the Gemara. The Zohar, the Gemara just says it, that, are connected, the 240, that they correspond to the 248 limbs of the person in the Zohar, the 240 limbs, as it were, of God himself. Now, there's, in a person... There's two elements to a person, and to the, even to the limbs, to the, to the parts of a person. There's one general element to the limb of a person is that every limb re uh, um, it reflects, of course, an individual power. But they all together are reflective of the fact that they reflect the neshama, they reflect the soul. However, you're going to define that term soul, but even in the, in the most basic level, the I. I want, and something of, my, of me does. I want to move, my hand moves. I want to walk, my, my foot walks. I want to talk, and, and my mouth keeps on moving. Um, and then there is the individual trait that every um, part, every limb has. When we talk about individual limbs, however, it's not all the same in terms of their individuality. There are those kinds of limbs, a hand, a foot, and so on. And then there are those parts of the body, like the heart, the brain. The difference between the two, you need every part of your, your, your body, and we should all be well and, and, and for long and happy and healthy years with complete bodies. But a person, God forbid, without a hand, continues to exist. God forbid, without a foot, it shouldn't happen to anyone. But without a heart, without a mind, without a brain, then there's no person. That goes to the very core of what the individual is. Just as there are individual mitzvahs, within mitzvahs itself, there are also specific mitzvahs, 
And then there are those mitzvahs that you might refer to as the mind-heart kind of mitzvah. So in effect, you're saying that mitzvahs are in general like three categories. There's the general notion of a mitzvah as it's tzivu Hashem, it's God's commandment. And then the fact that each commandment is reflective of a specific element of our existence. And within that, there are those that are reflective of important, and then there are those that are reflective of vital, without which we, they, we not only do we not exist, but that they, in fact, af- why can't we exist without them? Because they, in fact, affect all of the other parts of our being. We need our heart and our mind, not just simply because we don't want to be called heartless, but we, we need a heart because without it, none of the other limbs could exist. Without the brain, none of the others could be directed. So they are general in that they affect all of the rest. In the same sense, that's what the Rebbe did when he took these 10 mitzvahs, every mitzvah, all 613 mitzvahs are, of course, important and reflective of Hashem's will and each have their own effect. But of the mitzvahs, of the mitzvahs, the Rebbe pointed to 10, the 10 mitzvahs, the 10 mitzvah campaigns, as mitzvahs that don't just have their own individual importance and characteristic in terms of what it does in and of itself, but that it affects every other mitzvah that we do and we need to do. And going down that list, Torah, the first one, Torah, the study of Torah. When we study Torah, well, the idea of study of Torah is that intellectual comprehension. And it is only through that intellectual comprehension of Torah and the understanding of Torah that every other mitzvah can be done. In the same sense, um, the second bias molis for him, <laughs> you can't learn Torah if you don't have anything to learn Torah out of. And that's why we need to have many Jewish books in our homes, Torah books in our homes, so that we can, in fact, study Torah on a regular basis and acquire that knowledge absolutely necessary. So <clears throat> those are mitzvahs dealing with between God, man and God. And then are the mitzvahs between man and man. First, of course, the mitzvah of Abbas Yisrael, the love of fellow. And the notion, the love of fellow, is really the general mitzvah that, and, that informs every other mitzvah that has to do with another human being, that whatever that interaction is going to be, and whatever the circumstances of that interaction is going to be, but that interaction has to be imbued with the mitzvah of Abbas Yisrael, love of fellow, which, of course, in its practical ramification, comes to the next mitzvah of tzedakah, that we have in every house that there be a tzedakah pushkin. Why a tzedakah pushka in the home? So that every single day we give tzedakah. Why do you need to give every single day tzedakah? On the contrary, like one big check at the end of the week, or at the end of the month, or at the end of the year, and boom, and let them charge your credit card. Every day if they want. Why the, the notion of a mitzvah and in the kitchen, and to put something in there every day? Because there's two elements to tzedakah. On the one hand, it's, sure, he needs it. Whoever it is, the recipient needs the tzedakah. We need the tzedakah. We need to teach ourselves and make it an, an, an integral part of our existence, that just as we wake up in the morning and the first thought is, is our needs, what is it that I need? I need to stand up, I need to get dressed, I need to eat, I need to go, I, 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 oh, oh, stop. There's also a him, 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 her, her, her. And every single day we need to accustom ourselves and teach ourselves we need to take care of another and something out of our pockets and into that stuck of pushkin. And then of course, the mitzvah of chinuch of education. It's not just for ourselves, but that we have a requirement to teach that, first and foremost, of course, to our own children, grandchildren, families, and to the world as a whole. That's the mitzvah of chinuch, the mitzvah of, um, of a, uh, educating others as well. And that which, which comes, of course, um, which is the mitzvah of education. And then <clears throat> there's the mitzvah of tefillin. Rabbi El wanted to actually speak about it at length, but uh, um, because of the time, and uh, uh, now I'm, I'm in a person, a person, you can divide a person generally into three parts. There's a person's understanding, there's a person's feelings, and there's the person's actions. In that, unfortunately, there's often a lack of harmony within us, within ourselves. What we know and what we feel are often two separate things. We know this is right, but we don't feel that this is what we want to do. We know this is wrong, but we feel very strongly that we'd like to do it anyways. And that lack of harmony between mind and heart reflects itself in a very dysfunctional form of the way we actually do things or don't do them, so that that lack of harmony um, 
is, 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 a, is the major cause for our not being the way we know we should be, the way we ultimately feel we ought to be, and doing the things that we need to do. So how do you solve that problem? How do you solve a problem when you have three, as it were, warring factions, and how do you bring them together? Obviously, you bring them together in one place, and you put something over on top of them, and say, you've got to listen, or you put something over on top of them, and say, now direct it, and make sure that the heart does what it needs to do, the mind does what it needs to do, and the actions come out in the way that they are appropriate and, and, and important. And that's the mitzvah of tefillin. What's the tefillin? The tefillin is, you take tefillin, what's tefillin? Tefillin has in it, Shema Yisrael Hashem, Lekeinu Hashem, back to that word we began with, Hashem Echot, one God. Where do we put the tefillin? We put the tefillin first on our hands, the seat of action, or the metaphor for action, opposite our hearts, the seat of emotion, and on our heads to create each and every single day the realization that the harmony between the three ultimately is affected through the Hashem Echad, the tefillin that is on our um, heads above us. In a similar sense is the, the next mitzvah of mezuzah, the next mitzvah of mezuzah. What's mezuzah? That same notion as we have it within ourselves. It's not enough just within ourselves, but also outside of ourselves, in our homes, and everything that is around us. And that's what the mezuzah does. It's a reflection, again, of that Hashem Echod, that it cover and encompass everything that was in our homes. Now, just like we have positive general mitzvahs, there are also the negative, i.e. the things that, God forbid, can have a deleterious effect and a, a negative one. And here we come <clears throat> to the mitzvah of kashrus. Eating what you eat needs to be appropriate to you. There are foods that are healthy and nutritious, and then there are foods that are decidedly not. They're not healthy, they're not nutritious, um, and they do very bad things to you. So you, you're taught, and if you're not taught, then the doctor comes and bangs you over the head and, and demands that you be careful about what you consume because that's incredibly important. Just as that's true positively, it's also, I mean, in, in materially, in terms of the material food that we eat and its material effect on us, it's also true in terms of the spiritual effect that food has. Ultimately, our souls, the souls that are within us, are nourished by our bodies, okay? You don't keep, you don't eat, and the, the two will separate. Clearly, the soul is affected by what the body eats. It's in the body. Hence, the food also has to be spiritually appropriate and spiritually affected, i.e., it has to be kosher food. Similarly, Taras HaMishpach, and finally, to the, the, the laws of mikvah, and finally to the mitzvah of lighting the Shabbos candles, which is the mitzvah specifically given to Jewish women. Uh, the Rebbe explains, uh, we have right at the end of the story of creation, the first time around, and we said, of course, every Friday night of Kiddush, Vaychala lekim bayem hashvi is malach te'asherosa. God completed the, on the seventh day the work that he had done. And of course, the question is asking, when God completed on the seventh day? He completed on the seventh day. He completed on the sixth day. On the seventh day, he rested. What does it mean he completed on the seventh day? To which Rashi says, Ma chaser ha'elam. What did the world, what world was missing? Menucha, rest. Ba Shabbos, ba menucha. When Shabbos came, menucha came. So that's what God and Shabbos was created on Shabbos. Again, what do you mean? When God created the world, was he working? Was he resting? He was working. What does it mean when God created the world, he was working? He stopped working when? On the sixth day. So what's the finishing on the seventh? What's Menucha? And Chassidus explains, resting, what's the difference between working and resting? Working means you're concentrated in the object of your work. You're working, you're actually doing the thing. Resting means stepping back and away, and now it's yourself. It's no longer the work that you're doing, it's me, it's I. What is Shabbos? Six days a week were in the world that Hashem created. Ba Shabbos, when the seventh day comes, Ba Menucha, it gives us the opportunity as God brought resting into the world, i.e. himself into the world. Comes the seventh day, Shabbos, and that's the day we are given the opportunity to not be in his creation, but to be with him. Who creates that environment? Who creates that ability? Who brings the light into the world, that spiritual light that allows us, instead of concentrating on everything that's out there, on concentrating on he who was up there and is here with us and in us and all, that's what the Jewish women are, and that's the unique ability that they have to create that environment, and that's why Teir gives them that mitzvah of lighting Shabbos candles, gives you that mitzvah of lighting Shabbos candles, because it's that mitzvah that is reflective of their unique role in creating that spiritual space of not out there, but that inner here, where we can concentrate on the inner and essential essence 
of what the Abishter is and our connection to him. So that's why the Rebbe picked those 10 Miftzayim. Those are those 10 campaigns that are important, not just simply for us in terms of our own lives, but in fact, as each and every single one of you have been told, and every one of us have been told time and time again, certainly in the last couple of days, and I suspect we will not continue, we will not uh, uh, stop doing that, which is that our job is not just to have it for ourselves, but to share it with others, so to give every single other human being in this world the opportunity to become part of that world where God's presence is not just simply something that's talked about at a learning retreat, but rather becomes an, a, a tangible and felt um, a reality with the coming of Mashiach, at which point the world is, in the, in the words of our prophets, it's Deya Hashem, the world will be filled with the knowledge of God. Kamayim le'am